Time to welcome in two thirds of the Beyond the Arc podcast, Bill Ryder and John Gonzalez. And before we get to hear their lovely voices, let's check out the Eastern Conference standings after Thursday. So the Knicks, the Knicks, excuse me, they clinch a playoff spot. However, the three seed is still up for grabs. Cavaliers, one game back of them. The Magic and the Pacers, the five and six spots. 76ers in the plan right now. The Heat are one game behind them, and then you have the Bulls and the Hawks. All right, guys. The Knicks, they balled out on the road against Boston. Jalen Brunson put up a cool 39. They look really good. Bill, do you think with the remaining schedules for both the Knicks and Cleveland, do they take down, do they take that third spot at the end of the regular season? Uh, Chris, I think they do. They're, they're well positioned, and, and I have taken all of my Knicks out, which I've accumulated, I think, rightfully so, over a lifetime, and I've I've retired it. I put it aside. It, it, it's gone. Not only the fact they're playing the Nets, and the, the Bulls may be a little bit trickier over the last two, they've got all the tiebreakers that matter around them, including against the Cavs. Jalen Brunson is an absolute beast. We've talked about this, John and I, a bunch on the podcast. Yes, they're, they're in great position. Now, it's not a tough schedule, really, for, for Cleveland the rest of the way. They finish with the Hornets, and they've got – who do they have? The Pacers. So, so yeah. like, okay, Pacers, I guess, can be tricky. But, no, I think the, the, this is a Knicks team that has played great under real difficult circumstances, obviously missing key guys for long stretches of the year. We know Julius Randle is out right now for, for the remainder of the season. Yeah, your New York Knicks, New York City, are going to be the three seed, barring a, a collapse, and it's well learned. So, John, you rocking with Bill? Because I know y'all both got on the same dang ensemble, the gray suit <laughs> and the light blue collared shirt. Button up. So you gonna stick with Knicks too? Yeah, I have to stick with my guy. I mean, we planned out our outfits just like we plan out our takes. Unbelievable. Uh, the Knicks are in play here, right? I mean, this this would be the first time in 11 seasons if they pull it off that they've had a top three seed. They close out against the Nets and the Bulls, two games that they absolutely should win, and then the Bucks close out at OKC and at the Magic. That's not a gimme, especially with the way the Bucks have been playing. Yes, they won the last two, but. Uh, the Bucks a little shaky trying to lay in the plane here. And then you saw what happened with the Knicks tonight. I mean, they haven't beaten the Celtics all season. Yeah, the Celtics are a little bit on cruise control to wrap up the season here. But Jalen Brunson was a tour de force again tonight. 39 points. Missed ha having three straight 40-point games just by one point and only because they already had the game well locked up going into the fourth quarter. So Bill and I and Ashley were talking about it on Beyond the Arc podcast today about Jalen Brunson has a real case to be in that MVP discussion as a top five candidate. So if Jalen Brunson can keep this rolling in these last two games, yeah, this is absolutely in play for them to move up. He's been absurd. Last five yeah. games, 39, 45, 43, and 35, playing at an all-time elite level. Now let's look at the Western Conference, guys, which is even crazier. So the Nuggets think they probably have the one seed wrapped up, but look at the play-in tournament area and also that 6-7 spot. Pelicans, one game ahead of the Suns. And you have the Kings, who lost Thursday to the Pelicans. They're an eight, so they're guaranteed to be in the play. And then you have the Warriors and the Lakers. Now with the Warriors, Bill, they're locked into the playing game. How do you think they match up with the Western Conference playing teams? I think they match up extraordinarily well when Draymond and, and, and Clay are out there. They weren't obviously tonight, but they got the win against Portland. Against the play-in teams, the problem is it doesn't really matter, I think. And I'm I'm higher on the Warriors than, than probably other people are if they can get to a best-of-seven series. But if they finish in that 9-10 spot, I, I don't think it matters, presuming Denver is going to be the one seed, which, which they are, because they're not beating the Nuggets, I don't think, in an opening round best-of-seven series. So for me, the Warriors' goal has to be, and it impacts some of the other things we're going to talk about, they've now got this opening where they can win out, and if the Kings can drop their next game against the Suns, because they, they finish against Portland, if I'm remembering all these details right, there's a world where the Warriors can sneak up and they can maybe get out of that, that situation where you have to win two games to get into the playoffs and where even if you do that, you have to play against the Nuggets. I, I love how Golden State matches up against all these teams. We've talked about this too on Beyond the Arc. If you go back to late January, guys, when Draymond Green got reinserted into that starting lineup, this is a team that's got the fifth best record in the NBA over that stretch. They've got a top six defensive rating. They've got a top 10 offensive rating. They're fourth in net rating. Bunch of fa fancy words and a bunch of realities over a big sample size. They've got a championship resume. So I think they stack up well against a lot a lot of teams playing and otherwise but if they don't get to that spot where they avoid Denver I don't think it's going to matter much 
Denver is a juggernaut. We saw what they did against the Tebals, and that was a game that supposedly wasn't really a big deal, according to Nikola Jokic. We saw what he did, put up 30, and yeah, just absurd. Now, John, I got to ask you. You know the Warriors have been hitting their sweet spot, as Bill alluded to, ever since Draymond Green came back. Do you like all their matchups against the playing teams? I mean, they're playing really well. I think sometimes we look at them and they've been pretty much locked into that 10 spot for a while now. And we go, well, you know, they're only the 10th team in the West. We forget how good the West is. The, the Warriors, as Bill mentioned, since the All-Star break, the fifth best record in the NBA and their top 10 in both offense and defense. When Draymond and Steph and Clay are all out there, Kaminga's been good, Pajemski, they've really hit on something there. Uh, this is a good team, but the teams ahead of them are also really excellent. Let's just say for the sake of argument that they somehow get out of the play-in. Congratulations, that's wonderful. Guess what? You've got the Denver Nuggets, and you're going to have to play in Denver and get get through that whole gauntlet with the best player in the world who's about to win his third MVP in the last four seasons. That is a really tall order. Yeah, I think Golden State is playing great. If I could rearrange the schedule for them and put them against basically any other team if they got out of the play-in, then I'd give them more of a shot. But yeah, their, their prize here, if they should be able to pull it off, is running into the defending champion. So it's going to be tough. Yeah, very tall well, it, pass. Well, go ahead, Bill. If they beat the well, if I get the right, if they beat the Pelicans next and the Kings continue to stumble and they're obviously missing Malik Monk and Kevin Herter, that there there's a world where the where the Warriors could miss what John's talking about. I'm with John, but they still have an outside chance and I may think a legitimate chance at, at getting out of that that 9 10. It's, John's right. The, the West is so good and everything's so crowded that the margins are so thin that Every game matters down the – literally every basketball game matters down the stretch, at least for the teams that have that are fighting for, for something. So I'm with John, but I that's why I think there's a world where – and the Warriors have to get some help from Phoenix who play the Kings, presuming the Kings don't blow the last game of the year against Portland. But I think – I think having won this game without Clay and without Draymond, the Warriors now have something to play for because the Kings look look really problematic. And I think probably Steve Kerr and Co. are right with John because John's right on. They ain't beating the Nuggets, but I I think there's a world where they can they can beat the Timberwolves or the Thunder. I think in the best of seven series in a way they it is almost an impossibility or feels like it is against Denver. Yeah, and speaking of the Kings being problematic, the Pelicans swept the season series five and zero. The first time an NBA team has done that since 1995. Now, the Pelicans, they're without Brandon Ingram, and they were running away with this game for much of it, and now they're fighting with the Suns, who, quite frankly, guys, uh, they've looked abysmal at times. I mean, they almost lost to a Clippers team that was without their entire starting five, right? Kawhi, <laughs> right, all of them, like Bones Highland was going off. So when you look at that matchup, right, or you look at those seeding six and seven, do you think the Pelicans will take over the Suns and secure that sixth seed? Bill, you first. I, I mean, look, the Pelicans are a better team, or at least have been a more consistent team. And until Ingram went down, John and I discussed this a lot. We were aligned on the fact that if you're top 10 in offensive and defensive rating over the course of an entire NBA season, it bodes really well. It's basically a required resume reality for, for would-be NBA champions. Doesn't guarantee you'll be a champion, but almost all champions in the last 30 years have been top 10 in offensive and defensive rating. And the Pelicans were there. Now, they, they've fallen off offensively, but they, they, were, they were there. That said, the Pelicans have a really difficult game against the Warriors, and the Warriors are, are playing for something, as we discussed. And then they got to go and they got to play the Los Angeles Lakers, who are, you know, playing for something. And, and maybe they'll rest guys depending on where they are. The Suns are inconsistent, but do I think the Suns can win a couple games down the stretch and kind of find their form? I, I do. And the Suns have the tiebreaker. I mean, it's really tough to call. I think the Suns might actually pull it out, even if they don't deserve to, because when they have lost, some of their losses have been so humiliating. It doesn't count as three losses in, a, in the loss column when you lose a single game, but there's multiple times where it really felt like it should over the course of the season. When they're bad, they're really bad. Yeah, it's uh, an extreme, to say the least. So the Suns' remaining schedule, guys, Sacramento, and then the T-Wolves. John... Are you going to be rocking with the Suns, who are very inconsistent, as Bill alluded to, or do you feel like the Pelicans, even despite that tough remaining schedule, they can pull it out without Brandon Ingram? Yeah, I've been on the Pelicans this entire time. I mean, after tonight's win, they're guaranteed no worse than a seven seed. If they win out, 
the last two games, they get the sixth seed. And yes, the Warriors and the Lakers ostensibly are two tough games to finish out. But let me throw this at you. The Pelicans have the second best road record in the NBA. Only the Celtics have been better. And the Warriors, for some reason, haven't been great at home this year. They, they are already guaranteed to have a better road record this season than a home record for the first time in franchise history. So I think that's a winnable game for the Pelicans. We saw how good they were tonight. Zion was awesome. They played great defense. They have the seventh best uh, record from three uh, in the NBA this year. I think they've been really good. Yeah, they'd love to get B.I. back, but so far, like, C.J. McCollum has stepped up. Trey Murphy has stepped up. As I mentioned, Zion has been really good. Zion is eyeing his first ever playoff appearance. I like the Pelicans, and especially because, Chris, as you mentioned, uh, when the Clippers did have everybody against the Suns, the Clippers smacked the Suns, blew them out. It was embarrassing in Phoenix. Then they come back to L.A. Nobody plays for the Clippers, and the Suns had a scuffle a little bit before finally winning that game. They've been hugely inconsistent all season long. Give me the team, the Pelicans, who have not only been consistent, but know how they like to play and know what they're good at. Hey, I ain't got no argument there because De Devin Booker talking about we chilling after getting embarrassed by the Clippers. Then they followed <laughs> it up with that other performance. So I'm with both of you. I got the Pelicans. I feel more confident about them than I do the Phoenix Suns. Bill Ryder, John Gonzalez, thanks so much, guys. And if you want more content from Bill and John, tap in and subscribe to the Beyond the Arc podcast with them and CBS Sports basketball host Ashley Nicole Moss. They cover the NBA from just about every angle you can think of. And it's every single day. So download and subscribe to the Beyond the Arc podcast wherever you get them.